Hey guys, welcome back. So today, continuing work on this Cub Cadet tractor. Uh, this one was given to the channel by Paul. He used it for many years until one day he accidentally hit his apple tree. Uh, the apple tree didn't survive and neither did the tractor. It blew out the steering, so the wheel just spun and the wheels did not turn. So he upgraded after that to a zero turn, which actually you're going to see next week. Anyway, it's been about four or five years that this machine has been in this state. And in part one, I went into it assuming that if I got the steering fixed, we could just give it a tune up, get it outside and put it to work. You know, unfortunately, the more I dug in, the more issues I discovered. And that part one, that video got pretty long. I kind of ran out of time and ran out of parts. Anyway, it's a week later. I've got a box of parts that I think will get this machine back up and running the way that it should be. So let me get you set up a little bit better and get going on this. I'm gonna start just by removing the side panel. I need to get a new cooling tin installed and it's gonna be a lot easier with this out of the way. So I'm just gonna loosen this up. You don't have to remove it because it's actually slotted. Uh, there's two more bolts down there, same type of setup. I've already loosened that up. So in theory, this should come right out. Okay, now we're in. It was pretty easy actually to pull that. Probably should have done that last week. Anyway, there's a few things here we need to tackle. I did buy new spark plugs, so we'll get that swapped out. The oil filter. The dipstick tube, which had a hole in it, so I have a new one of those. And then, of course, the cooling tin that's supposed to run from here over across the head. That was rotted out and mostly missing. So I think we'll start with the plug and the filter and go from there. There's a look at the plug that just came out. It's a Champion RCJ8Y. And the new plug is the same part. And I've already double checked the gap. It is right at 30 thousandths. So we should be good. That filter was on pretty loose. I was expecting it to put up a fight. And of course we're dripping oil, but I've got cardboard on the floor. I've already oiled the seal. I'm just adding a bit of oil to the filter. I can't really top it off because I'm probably going to lose a lot of it tipping it sideways. But if I'm fast and keep spinning it, we might not lose a whole lot. Perfect. Now we get the heat shield on. If you remember from the first video, the section from he like basically here to here was just gone non-existent. So in order to get the old heat shield off, we had to remove this oil pressure switch. So we'll do that again. And probably get this bolt out of the way. There might have been, looks like silicone around this pressure switch. So yeah, I don't know if I need to use some sort of sealant there. I think this is a pipe thread. I think it tightens itself, but now that I'm saying that, I'm not so sure.
going to blow it around here before removing this towel. This is where the oil dipstick goes. And the oil dipstick tube had a hole chewed in it. So it was throwing oil kind of all in this area. So we've got a new dipstick tube, some new seals, and a new dipstick. Just adding a little bit of engine oil to the new tube and the new seal. So this is just a push fit. And that's pretty much it, at least for now. We can't actually secure the tube because the bolt that secures it also secures the blower housing. So we need to finish up in here before we can complete that install. Anyway, I noticed there was some sealant around this oil pressure sensor, which I don't think you need. This is a pipe thread. It's interference fit. So as long as it's snug, we shouldn't have a leak here. I think we're there. So we'll just get this wire back in. Maybe blow that out a bit. I think we're pretty much done on this side. So I'm gonna move on and get the flywheel reinstalled and then turn my attention to the ignition system. We have some bare wires here that were patched with some silicone. And this coil, although it was still sparking, when I removed the bolts, some of the lamination started falling apart. So I do have a new coil to replace that. I'm gonna start just by getting this coil completely out of the way. The flywheel, the gear for the starter hits these coils. That's why I had to uninstall or at least remove the bolts. So I could kind of move it out of the way. So with this one out of the way, it'll make it a lot easier. And I can see we do have some junk still under that coil. So let me clean that out real quick. So the key is right there on the crankshaft. So be sure to line the flywheel up with the key. Like that. I just noticed another issue here on the cooling fan. You know, I hadn't lifted this piece of metal off until just now, and I can see there is a ton of corrosion under there. Now, it's not an immediate issue, you know, this piece seems to lock in to those locating pins, like the part underneath it. So I guess what I'm wondering is, are there supposed to be two of these here? Or did this one rot out and someone just doubled up on it? You know, that I'm not sure, but I think we'll be okay, at least for now, because this top piece seems to be good. Anyway, to get this installed, there is a locating pin right there, which needs to line up with the keyway. So before installing it. I am going to put a little bit of fluid film on there, although it's a little late for that. And more importantly, I'm going to put some on here just to kind of slow down any additional corrosion so we don't end up with an issue in the future of the fan flying off due to corrosion issues. All right, 
right, so we get this back in, get it locked in place on those pins, and then we'll line up that tab right on the keyway until it drops in place, which is right there. We'll add a little bit to here as well. And there's also locating pins here, which you need to line up like that. We've got a washer and then the bolt. So the flywheel, it gets torqued to 43 foot pounds. Yeah, I'm going to hit it with the impact right now just to give it a little bit of torque. We'll get it exact later uh, when we replace the pulley on the drive system. The pulley down there. That gets torqued between 38 and 50 foot pounds. So I'm probably going to do 43 on each, which will make it a lot easier. So now that the flywheel's on, we can get the coil mounted, at least on this side and gapped. So right now I've got the coil pulled away and I'm just going to snug the bolts up a bit so the coil doesn't move. And if we rotate the engine so that the magnet is underneath, we can then just use a business card to gap that. It should be about 10 thousandths of an inch. seems like we're pretty close. So we'll just loosen those up. The magnet should pull it in. We'll push it and hold it and just snug those bolts up. Yeah, and we are pretty close even before making that adjustment. And now that I look at this closer too, this coil is starting to delaminate as well. So probably should have gotten two coils. So we'll have to keep that in mind. At some point, I should replace this coil as well as that metal piece that's corroded. Let's see, we'll get this wire off of here. This is the, uh, the bad wire. We'll just get this wire off and it's being replaced with a brand new one. Maybe. There we go. And pretty much the same procedure on this side for the new coil. I'm just going to wrap the new wire where it should be. The old wire goes right through there and there is a quick connect or quick disconnect right here. So we can just fish that out. I'll put the new one in its place.
and just rotate it at least once around to make sure the coil isn't dragging anywhere on the flywheel. And in this case, I think we're good. So the airbox suffered some damage at some point. It fell on those exhaust pipes right there. So I do have a new one of those, uh, but I think before I do install that, I am going to get this off. It looks like the base of the airbox has a lot of junk in it. So uh, that needs to be cleaned up. And I think I'm going to take the carb off as well. Although it's running the engine halfway decent, you know, I think it's been a long time, if ever, since it's been cleaned. And it is surging a bit. So we'll get these two things off. We'll get them cleaned up and get it back together. So I apologize. It's kind of hard to get the angle here to get the good shot. You know, I can't even see it myself. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's a 10 millimeter, which it seems to be. So there's two nuts holding this box onto the carburetor. And there's also one in each corner. So we'll get those off. There's also a breather tube that should free up the air box and allow that carb to slide out. This one's already loose. Yeah, all these are fairly loose. So maybe this carb has been off at one point. I actually see a little bit of RTV on top of it. So I don't know if that's someone sealing the carb or maybe it was just from that repair job on that chewed wire, which is, I would say, more likely. This looks kind of interesting here. There's not really a Z-bend on this. Like usually you would disconnect these rods first or slide the carb off and tilt it up to get it off. But the way these are facing, I'm not sure that's gonna work, either approach. Anyway, let's get, let's see if we can get this rod out. Yeah, there's no way to disconnect that. So we must need to do something down below. Uh, these go behind this plate here. So let's pull the bolts from the plate. Uh, for now, I guess we can let this hang out right here. So I've tried to get you a little bit closer to the action here. Uh, there's a bolt on each side holding this plate on. So I think if I remove these bolts, this plate should move forward a bit. And maybe that'll shed some light on how to get this carburetor out of here.
Okay, not sure that really does anything for us. And I can at least get a little more access, a little more play here on the carb. So I think that might help us. We do have some more slack, so maybe I can turn this out now. Yep. There we go. I've never worked on one of these Kawasaki's before, and I've got to say, it's a little involved to get that carburetor off. I would say it is the hardest, almost the hardest of anything I've worked on. I think the Briggs Vanguard is right up there with this as far as what you need to do to get it off. Anyway, it's off so we can get it cleaned up. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you the air box. This right here, especially this area, is supposed to be clean. This is where the air filter is. And you can see it's quite dirty, so I'm sure the engine ingested some dirt. So we definitely need to get that cleaned up. And, you know, as far as the cover goes, I mean, these holes here really aren't impacting anything. This can still function properly. So I don't think these holes had anything to do with how the dirt got in there, other than the fact it just indicates this had fallen off at one point and landed on the exhaust and most likely was there for a while based on what I'm seeing here. Anyway, this is also going to get a bath in the ultrasonic once we get the carb cleaned up. So uh, let's start just by getting actually some of the debris off the outside before we start opening this up. All right, let's see how bad this is. I'm guessing not too bad since the engine runs halfway decent. But I've been proven wrong before. Not too bad, actually. A little bit of rust, a little bit of scale. But in the grand scheme of things, this is actually pretty clean in here. So we'll just get the float out, the needle, and the main jet. The pilot jet, I don't think will come out. This is actually a needle with a limiter cap. So I'm probably going to leave good enough alone on that. But we'll get everything else out and let it soak for five or 10 minutes, and we should be good. Needle looks pretty good. This should be the main jet in the emulsion tube. Doesn't want to come out though. So let me, let me try the impact. That usually can break those free without destroying the brass. I've got this set on the lowest setting. And this is a pretty weak impact. Yeah, let's bump it up one. That did it. So that is the main jet.
And there is an emulsion tube in there. I assume it comes out. Some carburetors, though, they don't. Yeah, it's moving. There we go. And that is it. So I'm just going to run through all the passages real quick, make sure none of them are blocked. We'll let it soak for a bit and put it back together. One thing worthy of note here, after going through these passages with the wire, I put carb spray through each of them just to see where each one goes. And the one I was most interested in finding was the one that leads to the pilot circuit, which ended up being the one here on the top left. When spraying through that, I could see carb cleaner coming through these holes on the top of the carburetor, but only the ones that were kind of behind the throttle plate or right at not the one in the very front. And that's the pilot circuit. That one is in front of the throttle plate. It's always supplying fuel. And that's the one that's adjustable through this needle right here. So what I did was I opened up the needle as far as I could, sprayed some cleaner through it forwards and backwards. And eventually I got a really good flow coming from that. So that I think is what was causing the periodic surge. You know, otherwise the carb's not in that bad a shape, at least on the inside. So I might take the Dremel to this, just make sure all this debris is loose and out of here because the ultrasonic doesn't really handle rust, just dirt and varnish. Came out pretty well. Just get the rest of this stuff out. And hopefully the airbox fits. Probably gonna have to rotate it a few times. I did kind of get off all the heavy stuff, but now we're just left with oily dirt. Cleaning up pretty well, but I gotta say that water looks like mud. Carb cleaned up really nice. So let's get it back together, starting with the emulsion tube and the main jet.
Let's try it out. All right, let's give this a try. Hopefully it goes easier now that we kind of know what we're doing. Beautiful. Got a new cover, in slightly better condition than the original, and new filter with a pre-filter. I just noticed a problem here, actually two problems. First, the metal plate that goes on here, it looks like it was digging in. So it's actually cut through in spots here on the cover. So not an immediate concern, but that's something we're gonna have to add to the list at some point. We're gonna need to replace that, probably the other coil. And I did double check the parts diagram. There's only supposed to be one plate there. So someone already did double up and we don't need to replace that other part. If anything, we should pull it out. You know, for now, I don't think these are immediate issues, but what is kind of an issue is these bolts. I was missing two, so I ordered two new ones. And the old ones had a shoulder on it, and the new ones do not, and they're also shorter. So, yeah, we're gonna have to be careful using those. The shoulder makes it so you can't torque down too tight and crack the plastic. So we'll use these for now, but the two new bolts, we're gonna have to go pretty easy on them and at some point circle back with the correct part.
There we go. Perfect. Kind of put a thin coat of anti-seize on here. Help the next guy out. Be nice if the manufacturers did this. Got a breaker bar on the flywheel. So the flywheel gets torqued to exactly 43 foot-pounds. The pulley on the bottom, that can get torqued anywhere between 38 and 50. I'm just gonna do them both to 43. So I'm gonna hold the breaker bar still. We'll torque this down to 43 foot-pounds, and then we'll move the torque wrench to the other side just to make sure they're both at 43. Not much left now, we just need some oil and a battery. And hopefully this thing starts. Yeah, maybe a touch over full, but then again, the oil filter isn't full either, so let's get the battery back in. We'll run it just for a second, make sure everything works, and we'll double check that oil.
Okay, let's give this a quick try. I still need to put the screen covering the flywheel on. But for now, I just want to crank the engine, build some oil pressure, let the carb fill, and see how the engine runs with that hopefully clean carb. So we'll crank it with the choke off. And the oil pressure light just went off. So let's turn the choke on. I'd say that was a pretty good test. It started right up, the engine responded well, and it idles very smooth. There is no surge whatsoever. And more importantly, the drive system is working much better. When I first test drove this after fixing the steering, you know, I could hear a noise and I could feel it. You know, the wheels, they were not driving smooth. They were kind of pulsating. And I was worried that maybe we had a bad transmission. And thankfully, replacing that belt and pulley made all the difference because it is now running smooth. And yeah, I'd say we are pretty close. So let's get the screen back on over the fan. You know, I think we need to drive this outside, pressure wash it. It's still a mess. And we'll get the deck on, put it to work, see what it can do. Well... Pressure washing, not going to happen. The pump on my pressure washer is no longer working, so I'm going to make a video on that. I'm actually most of the way through. So with any luck, we'll get that pressure washer up and running and get this thing cleaned up. Uh, that said, you know, before getting the mower deck on, there's another problem that I've been ignoring. And the reason for it is because there's no part available to fix it. You know, this steering wheel goes right through this dash panel and then down to the gears that we replaced in the beginning of the video. And there is a lot of slop in this. You know, the plastic down here, it is blown out and that is part of the dash panel. So the problem is actually worse than I thought. You know, looking at it more closely, I can see that there looks like there might be some JB Weld on here. Uh, there's also a screw that's been driven in to kind of act as a set screw to limit how far this wheel moves. And even worse, uh, my son sat on this the other day. He wanted to take it for a test drive. So he sat in the seat. It was too far back. So we used the wheel to pull himself forward. And the entire dash panel ended up in his lap. So I started looking at it more closely and realized that it was just being held on by some zip ties. And those zip ties were brittle. They broke and the whole thing went loose. So I've put some new zip ties on, but that just kind of highlights how badly this is designed and the condition that it's in. So yeah, not great. You know, the new zip ties are holding it pretty well. So I don't think that's immediate concern, but I do want to correct this issue if possible. You know, if this gets much worse, it's going to cause issues down on the gears that we replaced earlier. So I have an idea that might work. So let me show you. The initial thought was just to use a bushing. Uh, this one I believe is three quarters of an inch and the steering shaft is five eighths. 
So this would work pretty well. You know, I think the biggest issue is that the flange here, it's really thin. You know, I can't screw it down or bolt it down to the plastic. You know, I could potentially use JB Weld, but with such little surface area, I don't think that's going to hold. So using a bushing is pretty much out. So what I ended up doing was ordering a pipe floor fitting. Uh, this is for a three quarter inch pipe. The actual diameter here is one inch. So if I kind of cut out the plastic, the thought is I could put it like that, use JB Weld to hold it down and a few bolts to give it some extra strength. And I think that will solve the issue. That said, you know, there are threads on here. They are kind of sharp. So they might wear down that steering shaft. And the shaft is actually 5 8 So if I use a fitting like this, a brass fitting, and attach it kind of like so, that does two things. The threads are no longer an issue, and the inner diameter is now 3 quarters of an inch. So there's going to be a lot less play. So I think that will stabilize the situation. So let's get the steering wheel off. We'll cut what we need to to make this fit. And hopefully that'll solve the problem. Let's start by removing this screw and just see how bad the play is. Yeah, not, not a whole lot worse, actually. So, there's hope. Anyway, I gotta go down under the tractor, get that gear off the shaft, and then we should be able to lift this right out of place. All right, change of plan. I can't actually lift the shaft out by lifting it up. There is a flange on the bottom of the shaft and that will not pass through this hole. So instead, I guess plan B, we can try pulling this cover, getting that nut off, and then we can lift the wheel off. And then if we move the shaft just right, we can probably drop it down just enough to clear the dash. And that will allow me to do what I need to do right here. It's already loose. I need to cut a hole roughly the diameter of this bushing. So I'm going to mark it where I think it should be. And then I'm going to use a Dremel to cut it out.
Yeah, we're pretty close. Yeah, it's a little bit uneven. I think I should take just a touch more off on this side so we can center it up a little bit better. Yeah, that's pretty much perfect. So I'm gonna drill a couple holes and then we'll JB weld it on, bolt it down, and I think we'll be good. Yeah, there's a little bit more play in there than I thought we were going to have. You know, I was expecting about an eighth of an inch. I think we're closer to three sixteenths. You know, that said, at least it's stable. You know, it's not going to wear out like this. And I think it's going to be better than it was before. So let's just double check that we still have enough clearance. These bolts, I'm a little bit worried, might bottom out. And no, it seems absolutely fine. So good. Let's get that steering shaft dropped back through. We will JB weld this, secure these bolts and put the steering back together. So that went on without issue and I'm just going to add a little bit of grease probably should have done this before to work it into that pipe
I'm going to add an extra washer just to give it a little more clearance. It's very close to the bolts. And I don't want to have to take this apart again if I can avoid it. That is a million times better. Wheel turns nice and smooth. And more importantly, most of that play is out of there. Good. Yeah, need a bit of oil now that the engine is run, so we'll top that off to the full mark and get the deck on. Perfect.
No issues to report. It cut this section of my yard without issue. So I'm not going to torture you by making you watch me cut the whole thing. Now, I think we are out of the woods, though, on this one. You know, I went into it thinking it was just a steering issue. Fix the steering, give it a tune-up, and good to go. Of course, the further I dug in, the more issues I found. And all in, I spent about $450 to get this to where it is now. You know, is it worth it? I think so. Especially when you consider the cost of a new quality tractor like this one. You know, I was in Home Depot the other day. I walked by a John Deere for $3,500. And that one had a plastic hood. So, yeah, is it worth it? Definitely. Anyway, I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.